What's up guys? So following on from my previous video on Tesla's auto park function, today we're going to be doing a deep dive on summon and smart summon. Let's get started. Similar to auto park, summon and smart summon are two features which come included as part of Tesla's six and a half thousand euro full self-driving upgrade package. According to their website, Tesla describes Summon as a feature which you can use to automatically park and retrieve your vehicle, while Enhanced Summon is shown as an upcoming feature which will enable your parked car to come and find you in a car park. Having read that, the first thing I'll say is Tesla are definitely taking a bit of poetic license when it comes to the wording they use to describe these features, so let's bring it back down to earth with a deeper look at how these features perform in the real world. Firstly, Summon by itself is a system designed to enable you to remotely move your Tesla forwards or backwards out of any tight space without the need for a driver or passengers to be in the vehicle. From a hardware perspective, Summon, like Autopark, does not use any of the eight autopilot cameras to work and instead relies entirely on data provided by the 12 ultrasonic sensors coupled with some rudimentary GPS information to function correctly. Unlike Auto Park, someone does not have the capacity to identify parking spaces. But like Auto Park, it does use the ultrasonic sensors to determine the vehicle's position relative to any surrounding obstacles. So what do Tesla mean when they say you can automatically park and retrieve your vehicle using Summon? Well, let's take a look at an example. In this case, I've positioned my car directly in front of a parking space that would otherwise be too tight for me to park in without running the risk of bumping one of the other cars when getting out. With Summon, I can instead get out of the car before moving into the space and use my phone to remotely reverse the car the rest of the way. To do this, you simply need to open the Tesla app, tap on Summon and hold down the reverse button. In this way, Summon works like a remote control, remotely activating the car, shifting into reverse and reversing into the parking space. All you need to do is keep an eye on what the car is doing and keep your finger pressed on the reverse button. Unlike Auto Park, someone does not know when the car has successfully parked itself within a parking space, so it's up to you to stop the process whenever you see fit. Once you think the car has reversed far enough, then you can let go of the button and someone will immediately apply the brakes and shut down the system. The process works much the same when you want to leave the space, with the only difference being that you hold down the forward button in the app to move the car out of the space. In terms of safety, the system uses the ultrasonic sensors to keep track of any nearby obstacles and prevent the car from crashing into them. From this perspective, you can customize the amount of clearance the car gives to surrounding obstacles in the autopilot settings, giving a bumper clearance from 20 to 120 centimeters and a side clearance of standard or tight. You also have the option to choose the maximum distance someone can travel from between three to 12 meters. So now that you've seen how the system works, it's pretty clear that unlike what Tesla say, Summon is more like a remote control that can remotely move the car forwards and backwards as opposed to a system that can fully autonomously park and retrieve the car for you. But that's just Summon. What about Smart Summon? Well, unlike Summon, Smart Summon does actually use the autopilot cameras in addition to the ultrasonic sensors and GPS data in order to work. By combining the data from these inputs, Smart Summon is able to perform more complex maneuvers using visual reference points like lane markings, pedestrians and other vehicles to plot a course to a specific location. This is a key differentiating factor between the two features since Smart Summon, unlike Summon, is unable to park in a parking space for you. Instead, the primary use case of Smart Summon is to pull the car out of a space and navigate towards you to pick you up at a specific location. Now, at this point in the video, I had intended to show you how cool Smart Summon was by having it automatically pull out of the parking space and collect me at the end of the car park. However, once I started filming, I quickly realized that Smart Summon isn't all it's hyped up to be. Let's take a look. Here we are back at the car park, and this time I want to use Smart Summon to come and pick me up at my current location. If I get out my phone, open the Tesla app, tap Summon, and this time click Smart Summon, you'll see that we're presented with a brand new interface. On the map, you can see the location of your car represented as a red arrow and your own location represented as a blue dot. Around the car is a blue circle which represents the maximum distance the car can travel from its current location. In Europe, this distance is limited to 20 meters. 
The globe icon at the top right lets you switch between map and satellite views, while the target icon below lets you toggle between whether the car will summon to your current location or a specific location you specify on the map itself. In this case, since I want the car to pick me up, I'm going to toggle the current location option and hold the come to me button to call the car to my current position. But after all that, nothing happens. The car stays put and instead I get a message telling me that the system is waiting for my phone to come back within range. Now, since we know the radius of the blue circle is 20 meters, you can clearly see that I'm less than 10 meters away from the car, but even so, that's apparently not close enough. So I move closer and closer again, and even closer still, until eventually I'm literally standing right beside the car when finally the system says that I'm back in range. However, at this stage, it was totally pointless to use the come to me button since my personal location was now exactly the same as the car's location. So at this point, I decided to switch tactics and try the target location option instead. If we go back to the Tesla app and tap the target button, we can now set a target location for the car to travel to. When you set a target, the app will show the projected route that the car will take via this blue line. And once you're ready, just hold down the go to target button and keep an eye on the car. Once again, I had to stand right beside the car in order for the out of range warning to disappear, but at least this time I started to see some action. As you can see here, the car begins to slowly pull itself out of the parking space before making a turn to the right to head in the direction of the target location. While it started off at a pretty swift pace, you'll notice that it begins to hesitate and become more unsure of itself once it crosses over the parking lines on the opposite side of the road. This is where the influence of the camera sensors comes in, since if the system were relying purely on the ultrasonic sensors, there would be no reason for the car to slow down at this point. The final turn is definitely a bit of a struggle, but as it pulls out, the system gets a sudden burst of confidence as it rushes to the finish at a pretty fast pace. Eventually, the car comes to a halt once it reaches the 20 meter maximum distance and promptly deactivates the system. So what are my thoughts on Smart Summon? Well, as you can probably tell from the tests, the feature is basically unusable for us here in Europe, and here's why. First and foremost are the operational range limitations. According to Tesla's documentation, a registered key needs to be within range of the vehicle at all times while someone is in operation, which is why in my tests I needed to stand right beside the car in order for the feature to work. Secondly, Tesla seemed to have updated the software recently, which adds a further constraint that stipulates, in addition to having a registered key nearby, the system also requires that the phone ascending the summon command is within close range of the vehicle. This means that a previous workaround whereby you could place a second registered key within the car and then use your phone to remotely operate someone from any distance no longer applies. And finally, the maximum summon distance of 20 meters is simply too short to be of any significant benefit in any situation I can think of, since by the time you get out your phone, open the Tesla app, connect to the car and initiate the summon maneuver, you'd have easily walked the 20 meter distance. And all this is even before we consider the reliability of the system, which in my experience is anything but consistent. In one case, the car almost drove into the vehicle to its right by turning far too sharply when exiting the parking space, while in another, the car randomly veered to the left when exiting the space, despite the fact that I had set a target location some meters to the right of the parking space. Standard summon, on the other hand, is definitely a bit more useful. While it's still limited by the close proximity operating distance, it does do its job pretty well by manoeuvring into and out of parking spaces with relative ease. Additionally, standard summon can also come in handy when pulling into parking spaces with high curbs, since you can just park halfway into the space, get out and then use summon to take the car the rest of the way in while you watch from a clearer vantage point. Finally, as we bring this video to a close, it is important to remember that Smart Summon, while it was a major letdown, is one of those features that can improve over time through software updates. So here's hoping that with a couple of those, coupled with some easing of restrictions from the EU, we might see some major improvements to the feature in the future. So that's it for today's video. I hope you found it useful and informative, particularly for those of you considering Smart Summon and Summon as a motivation to buy the full self-driving upgrade package. At least now you know what to expect. 
As always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more Tesla videos like this every week. And until then, I'll see you in the next one.